welcome back to my channel i hope you guys are all doing extremely well in these really tough times so today i'm gonna teach you guys on how to make this frame by frame animation in clip studio paint so to start off our animation we're gonna go to file new and this little animation folder that we're gonna use this says animation it's kind of looks like a youtube logo so we have other icons which are for illustration and comics and other stuff but we need the animation folder and you can also drop down and click animation from here so this is our page this white little thing is going to tell you the size of our page we can adjust the width and height of our screen accordingly here so I'm just putting in my numbers for what I want my height and width to be. This little corner here helps you adjust the blank space that surrounds your image. So over here you can adjust the size of where you want your actual screen to go. So the middle blue box is the thing that's going to get recorded. Anything you draw inside here when you render your animation is going to come out. But anything outside of it is going to be blank. It won't come on in the screen. This just helps us, gives us a margin to know how and where our drawing is going to go. I personally don't really use it, so I just set it up according to its original settings. But if you prefer, you can write keynotes on the side to help you when you're drawing on the inside. And this is for frame rate, how many frames you want per second. The usual animation is usually 24 frames per second. So I'm just going to go with that. I'm not really going to change anything else. And then there you have it. This is your screen for animating. It, and this is your timeline. Here is where you see all your illustrations, your sound, your animations go. I am going to start off by making a little small quick sketch of what I want my illustration to look like. So I need an old 1950s looking TV with antennas and back and then I need a butterfly that's gonna go around and fly on the corner of the TV and just flap her wings there. Okay, so I've got that down. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna illustrate this TV because this is gonna be a still image There isn't gonna be any movement in it. So I don't need to put it in an animation folder So what I'm gonna do is that I'm drawing this illustration out and I am just coloring it and shading it to what I want it to look like Okay, so this is the final product. This is what the TV is going to look like. Now what I want to do is I want to animate the butterfly that's going to be flying from the side and it will land on the corner of the TV. So each frame is stored on one second. So we have 20 frame, 24 frames per second and whatever the 24 frames end that's your one second and then from then on onwards we go to 48 frames which would be two seconds so now i'm gonna do a new layer open and then i'm just gonna draw a little loop-de-loop -loop of of how i want my butterfly to fly towards the tv so it's gonna start off in i'm gonna start off in the corner butterfly small little pea body here so I'm gonna set this to the first frame so first frame I'm gonna click on specify layer select the layer and then I'll click ok and then this little animation is gonna be on our first frame 
so now I'm adding about four more three more layers and then I want to add on layer 2 so as you can see I can't really add on layer 2 because it doesn't allow me so I'm going to click on 2 the frame number 2 I'm going to specify layer and then I'm going to click on layer number 2 and then I'll go ok and as you can see now I can't see it because I'm on layer 2 not on layer 1 so the little pea body disappeared if I want to see previously on what's on the previous layer I'm going to enable onion skin and then I'm going to be able to see the previous layers and the coming layer. So now I'm drawing on frame number 2. A little pea body again, coloring it in. And this is on layer 2. So now I'm going to draw on layer 3. So for that I move on frame 3. And again we're going to specify cell. We're going to select layer 3. Okay, And as you can see the previous layer 1 disappeared and now we can see the onion skin of layer 2 and then we can draw on layer 3. So this is how the frame system works. You can see the previous frames and you can draw on the frames by selecting the specify cell and then select which layer you want on what frame. So now you can see if I move this around you can see that the animation this is how the animation works that your actual object is moving forward so this is how animation so this is how frame by frame animation in clip studio paint works so now what i want is i'm gonna make a little caterpillar looking butterfly body and then i'm gonna loop it all around this string and then it's gonna land on the corner of the tv so i made this little caterpillar butterfly body and now i am just gonna move it forward on the string here I'm just gonna speed through this process because we're just repeating the same thing over and over again because the body of the butterfly isn't gonna change only the wings are gonna flap for that reason I am just gonna use the same layer duplicate it and then move it forward so you guys can see that I kind of skipped on the loop and I made it short that's because I only wanted it to end within 48 frames I wanted it to last for two seconds within 48 frames and then I wanted the rest of the two seconds for the butterfly to just stay on top of the TV so that's why I cut the movement of the butterfly short and stopped it within 48 frames okay so now I'm moving on to creating the wings of the butterfly this is gonna be the most hectic part out of the illustration because I have to create all the wings individually because they're all going to be different in different frames. So I'm creating every single wing individually on the body of the butterfly. But before that, let's move on to the TV. So the television is gonna have this static noise. You know when the cable's out and all you see are like little millions of black and white dots. So that's what the screen on the TV is gonna play. So for that I need a separate animation window which you can do right on the timeline and then I'm creating a layer in that animation window setting it on frame 1 selecting the square screen and I'm gonna use that spray brush for those millions of tiny dots. The screen is black and white so I'm just painting a white layer at the bottom and then moving forward with creating black dots in front of the white. So the thing is that I want this static animation to go for the duration of the 4 seconds. So instead of creating 120 frames that comes within those 4 seconds individually over and over again, I am just going with these 11 frames that I've created and then I am gonna and then I'm simply going to select all the frames in the timeline. I am going to copy them and then I am going to paste them from the next frame. So I'm just going to repeat this process till 120 frames. And now I've got a good 4 seconds of the static TV noise without having to create individual layer on my own. And now I'm going to create each individual wing of the butterfly. So I just skipped over that process. So this is basically the look of about 120 frames of a butterfly flying towards the TV. And now I'm gonna add sound. So for adding sound, we go to File, Import, 
audio and then I have my sound right here on the desktop static TV noise so I'm gonna open and then it's automatically gonna come in your timeline so I'm gonna work with the camera now and keyframes so I changed the look of the timeline a bit just so it'll be easier for me to work so now we're gonna work on adding a 2d camera so we go to animation new animation layer and 2d camera folder so here we have our camera so the thing is that whenever you add keyframe into a camera or you move whenever you edit the camera it's best to have all your animation folders or layers inside the camera so that anything you do to the camera will automatically happen with all your animation layers so i'm just gonna select all the folders below and i am gonna move them inside the camera folder so this way anything we do to the camera will automatically happen in the animation folders so now to work with keyframes you go in the add keyframes button on your timeline and click that and that way the keyframes will be enabled so now this is our camera right here i'm just scaling it towards where i wanted to start which is near where the butterfly is gonna come in the screen And then this is gonna be my first keyframe. And then I move towards the 20 frames of where I want the camera to stay still. So this is where I'm gonna add the second keyframe. And then from here I want the camera to pan out to 48 frames. So I'm just going to stop there and pan out the camera. And this is where the camera is going to take over the whole screen. So this is basically the movement of the camera. It starts off from where the butterfly is starting and then it pans out towards the whole screen. So this is how you can use camera and keyframes to alter your camera angles. Okay, so that's done. Now it's all that's left is to save our animation. So we simply go to file, export animation, export movie. And then here we just you can just name it whatever you want to I'm just gonna leave it untitled and then make sure your apply 2d camera is checked that way we are gonna get the camera angles and then the frame rate is fine and then quality and then you can just check everything like audio seconds I'm gonna go to high sound quality and width and height and everything else it's fine it's okay okay so it's loading and this is the final look thank you guys for watching if you have any questions feel free to drop a comment below you can also check out the clip studio tips link in the description below i'm glad you guys watched through this thank you for watching have a nice day